Hey guys, Miss Robinson here. Um, and as I often introduce myself to a new class, I'm Miss Robinson. Super easy to remember. Like Swiss Family Robinson. Like Jackie Robinson. Like Meet the Robinsons. There's a lot of us. And as such, I thought it appropriate for our first read aloud to be who was Jackie Robinson. Written by Gail Herman and super awesome illustrations by John O'Brien. So let's dive right in. Who was Jackie Robinson? Who was Jackie Robinson? July 23rd, 1962. National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum, Cooperstown, New York. Jackie Robinson stepped up to a mic, not home plate. He wore a suit and tie, not a baseball uniform. At 43 years old, Jackie had been retired from the Brooklyn Dodgers for five years. Here's Jackie coming up to that podium. Yet, the crowd cheered as loudly as if he just hit a World Series home run. Jackie faced the smiling crowd. About 2,000 people had gathered on Main Street in Cooperstown, New York. They were sitting and standing on the lawn in front of the National Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. Jackie's mother, wife, and children were there. So was Branch Rickey. He had hired Jackie. Many people who didn't know Jackie had also traveled long distances to see him enter the Baseball Hall of Fame. Here's some of the crowd, likely his family. Jackie felt proud and grateful. Growing up, he never thought something like this could happen to him. He thanked everyone, all of the people, he said, throughout this country who were just so wonderful. Baseball is a game of highs and lows, streaks and slumps. It's a tough sport, and it was tougher for Jackie than for any other ball player of his time. Why? Jackie Robinson was black. In 1947, when he joined the Brooklyn Dodgers, he was the first and only African American on the team. No other major league team had black players. It was an all white sport, and it had been that way for more than 50 years. When Jackie was growing up, blacks and whites did not have the same chances in life. And in baseball, no blacks played on national or American league teams. Many people thought black athletes didn't have the talent, drive, or smarts. Jackie proved these people wrong and made history. Now in Cooperstown, Jackie was making history again. He was the first black baseball player to enter the Hall of Fame. The plaque for Jackie listed all of his amazing stats. However, there was nothing about being the first black player. Jackie didn't want any mention of that. He wanted the plaque to honor his ability the same way it did for every other Hall of Famer. But there was no denying it. Jackie Robinson changed sports history. He was not only a baseball hero, he was a civil rights hero too. Jackie's pluck. Next, we have a little intro to Jim Crow laws. In Southern states, blacks and whites mostly live separate lives. There were many rules about where black people could and could not go. They couldn't go to school with whites. They couldn't eat in whites only restaurants or drink from white water fountains. Even if blacks paid for first class tickets on a train, they had to sit in a special car. These rules were called Jim Crow laws. Most likely the name Jim Crow came from a character in an old song and dance show. Jim Crow was a foolish grinning clown made up with a black face. And chapter one, Born in the South. On January 31st, 1919, Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born in the town of Cairo, Georgia. For a black family, living in the deep South was tough. Jackie's grandparents had been slaves. His parents farmed land as sharecroppers. That meant they didn't own their small piece of land. A white farmer did. Jackie's mother and father would plant and hoe and harvest the crops. Then they had to give part of their earnings to the farmer. There was never much money left over. His family on the farm. 
Jackie was the youngest of five children. Brothers Edgar, Frank, and Mac came first. Then sister Willa Mae was born, and finally Jackie. There are many mouths to feed. Life got tougher when Jackie's father walked out the door and never came back. Now his mother, Mally, had to care for her children and run the farm all by herself. We have Mac, Jackie, Mally, Edgar, Willa, May, and Frank. The 1920s were a scary time to live in Georgia if you were black. There were race riots. White people burned down black churches and schools. Mally wanted her children to be safe. She wanted them to feel equal to everyone and anyone, no matter their skin color. What could she do? Where could Mally find a better life for her kids? Mally had relatives in Southern California. She'd heard things were different there for black people. So she packed up all the family belongings. Jackie was only 16 months old when the family Robinson boarded a train that would take them all the way across the country. At midnight, the number 58 train headed west. The trip took more than a week. Finally, the Robinsons passed through Los Angeles. It was nighttime. Lights were glowing up and down the mountainside. Mally thought it was so beautiful. She had only three dollars in her pocket, but she had hope. Is that a train car? Chapter two, a new home. Mally found work as a maid. She also took on cooking and cleaning jobs. Soon she was able to buy a house in Pasadena, 10 miles from Los Angeles. All the Robinson's neighbors were white, and most weren't happy when the family moved in. Some even tried to make the Robinsons leave. They called the police when the children played in the street. Too noisy, they said. Other kids sometimes called Jackie names. Once when he was eight year old, a white girl shouted the most hateful word Jackie knew right at him. He wasn't afraid to answer back. Mally always stood up for her family, but she was calm and polite. Here they are, dealing with the not so kind neighbors. Over time, the neighbors grew to respect Jackie's mom. The family settled in. They grew fruits and vegetables in the yard. Mally sat in a rocking chair on the front porch and told stories. Even in California, Jackie knew there were rules blacks had to follow. He was only allowed to use the city swimming pool one day each week. He had to sit high up in the balcony at the local movie theater. Because Mally worked such long hours, often Jackie's sister, Willa May, took care of them. She was only two years older. Still, she bathed young Jackie, fed him, and dressed him. There's Jackie waiting outside the community pool that he could only have fun at one day a week. When Milla, Willa May started kindergarten, she took Jackie along. He'd sit in the sandbox outside the school. Willa May would watch him through a window. She made sure her little brother didn't get into trouble. Finally, the day came when Jackie could go to school too. Right from the start, his classmates saw how fast he ran. Kids, black and white, always wanted Jackie on their team. First, we have Jackie waiting outside of Willa May's class in the sandbox. He always had a ball in his hand, Willamay once said. In dodgeball, for example, Jackie would twist and turn, avoiding the ball. He always ended up the winner. When Jackie was about 11, times grew more difficult for millions of family in the United States. It was the Great Depression. It's a super expertise at dodgeball. Businesses were failing. People were out of work. It was harder than ever for Mally Robinson to make a living. Trying to help, Jackie took odd jobs. He had a paper route, he mowed lawns, but always, always he wanted to play ball and he wanted to win. He liked to be the best and he would be unhappy at school the day we lost, a childhood Fred once said. Others would shrug it off, not Jack. This paper route. And I'll see you guys next time or we'll pick up on chapter three, all around athlete.
until then, stay safe, stay healthy, stay kind. Bye guys.